How's it going YouTube? Welcome back to another video on this channel. So, the other day I was thinking of new videos to do. Now, being on YouTube, I often find myself looking for new things to share with you guys. If you've seen any of my other videos, you will probably say that curiosity gets the best of me in most of my videos. Like that time when I questioned how heavy a tractor tire was. In a land where tires are placed on walls and in a place where there seems to be no escape, one man, one sitting man, one sweaty man can flip them all. Or like that time when I wondered how water balloons will feel if they were thrown to my face. In a land where pennies fall from the sky, one guy protects his eyes to only realize that pain is about to come. From the directors of the No Hands Challenge in the one hit series Jenga, actors, voices and Carlos bring insane pain to the face and the brain. Or like that time when I hit 1 million subscribers on this channel. Cat lover, bench press presser, started from the bottom and still there. Mr. Lord and Lion believes he hit 1 million subscribers, but he didn't. Wait, 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 what? This is awkward. I guess that would explain that crime video I made. Hey, mama. So as you can see, I asked what if to a lot of things. Now, I came across a couple of cool science experiments that I want to try and I want to share with you guys. Now, some of these science experiments you might have already seen, but I haven't given them a try, so I want to try them out on this channel. So here are five crazy science experiments to try at home. Now remember, curiosity killed the cat, so don't be the cat and get some adult supervision. But if you're an adult, can you supervise yourself? Is that how it works? Well anyways, let's get started with the video. The following experiments should be done with adult supervision and permission. Burning your house should not be your mission. Another Nick No Banger. So for this first experiment, we'll be making a bouncy shellless egg. So what you're gonna need for this first experiment is some vinegar, a cup, and of course, an egg. So take your vinegar and pour out about a cup of vinegar. Now don't pour out too much to overflow the cup, but don't pour out too little because you're gonna need to place the egg in there. So take your egg and place it inside with the vinegar. Now immediately when you place the egg inside with the vinegar, you're gonna start to see the vinegar dissolving the solid calcium that makes up the shell. Now if you leave it overnight, 24 hours or for a bit, you're gonna start to see a brand new egg that's being protected by its membrane. This egg is pretty fun to play with as well. As you can see, it's very bouncy and it's amazing how it's still able to stay intact. The calcium is still remaining on the egg, so you might want to just clean it off before playing with it. Now, if you shine a light to it, you get to see what's inside of the egg. But since my light was poor, I could not see what was inside, so you might want to get a better light, but the thing is, still awesome. So since I was still curious to see what was inside of the egg, I decided to cut it in half in front of you guys with a knife. Now, this is pretty amazing, so let's take a look. As you can see, the egg is still in there, which is crazy because it's being protected by this membrane looking thing. So, let's just move on to the next one while I clean this up. So in this next experiment, I'll be showing you how to make a quick fire using a 9 volt battery. Now, I would only recommend to do this in a survival situation when you need a quick fire, not when you have matches and other things lying around with you. So for this experiment, what you're gonna need is some 9 volt batteries and some steel wool. Now you're gonna look for the very fine, very fine steel wool. Uh, you can find it at your local hardware store, so that's not a problem. 
So just take a couple pieces of your steel wool and what you're gonna do is place it inside a pan so it doesn't catch on fire and then you're gonna place your 9 volt battery on top and this is gonna create a short circuit in your battery creating some fire embers and like I said before I would only recommend this to be used in a survival situation not when you have other things like matches and other things laying around to create a fire because you don't really know what kind of toxins are being released by the steel wall but from here all you have to do is blow on it exciting the fire and now you could just place some pieces of paper or some pieces of wood to feed that fire and now you have fire to roll some weenies for Timmy and in case you are wondering what steel wall I use I use the one with the four zeros in the corner whatever you do do not use the one with the two zeros uh, that one is a lot thicker and it won't work and you'll be scratching your head and wondering why it doesn't work so be sure to use the right items alright so for this next experiment we'll be making a handheld fireball so for this next experiment what you're gonna need is a hundred percent cotton t-shirt it has to be a hundred percent cotton it can be anything else also what you're gonna need is a baking pan something similar to this scissors a lighter a needle with a hundred percent cotton thread like I said it can be anything else and lighter fuel I'll be using Ronsono lighter fuel if you guys are gonna use this be sure to read the labels as you can see here it says danger it does not say puppies and it does not say rainbows so be very careful when using this so take your t-shirt and what you're gonna do is cut strips now you don't want to make them too big and you don't want to make them too small try to mimic what I have here then what you're gonna do is roll it up into a ball then once you got your ball cut off any ends that might be coming in your way then what you're gonna do is get your needle and you're gonna try to thread it through now you might want to get a smaller needle than what I used in this video but use what you have once you got it threaded through wrap it around bring it around town spongebob style your goal here is to make it as round and circular as you can so take now your cotton ball and place it inside of the baking tray. Then get your Ronsonol lighter fuel and place some on top. Just don't place any on your hand and think that that's how it's going to work because I don't want to see you guys end up in the hospital. Just be very careful when doing this. Then what you're going to do is get your lighter and spark it up. Now as you can see there, it's going to burst up. Just don't get afraid because right after this, all you could do is uh, just pick it up without no fear. Now the top portion of the flame is really hot, but the bottom portion is really not as hot as you may think. But you might have to place some hot potato with it, so just be very careful. Now this probably worked a lot better because it's cold outside, but if you guys want to turn it off, you guys could pour some water on it or just close your hand. Now the reason why you're not burning your hands with this experiment is that Ronsonol is a fuel that burns with a cool flame. The top is hot and the bottom is warm. If you place this on a material like cotton that won't burn as easy, it creates this, a handheld fireball that you could roast your weenies on. Now for the next experiment, what you're gonna need is a pair of scissors and a tea bag. Now be sure to use the tea bag that is double folded and not the ones that are just folded once. So take your pair of scissors and cut off the top of the tea bag. Then just dump out anything that's inside of the tea bag. And what you want to do after is try to straighten it out as best as you can. Use your fingers to get in there and your task is to try to make it stand. Now one thing that I forgot to mention at the beginning that you're gonna need is a lighter. So get your tea bag and make it stand. Then get your lighter and watch what happens when you light it up. The thing starts to fly which is crazy if you ask me because something like that should not be happening like <laughs> what is going on now this is a pretty cool trick to do but just be very careful on where you choose to do it I at least did it in the shower where just in case something happens I could put it out but if I were you I would not put too much trust in a flying flame 
and for this last experiment we'll be making some hot ice breaking bad style so what you're gonna need for this next experiment is not much all you're gonna need is a measuring cup a spoon some baking soda and some vinegar now take your measuring cup and pour out one liter of vinegar then just place it inside of the pot then just take out your baking soda and you're gonna need about four tablespoons of baking soda with the vinegar now I know you guys have done this before where you guys place the baking soda with the vinegar and it fizzes up like that just don't do it at the same time because it'll end up like this and it'll create a mess so just take your time one scoop at a time and you should get a clear form like this now once you got this clear form take it inside to boil for about half an hour to an hour the time will vary depending on how high you put the stove now this might take a while so go sit down have yourself a cracker maybe two crackers maybe three but what you're looking for is some clear crystals to be forming at the side of the pot sometimes they form uh, sometimes they don't so don't burn the solution once you think that it's had enough take it out then what you're gonna do is pour it inside a glass dish. Then just take it to your fridge and put it in there to cool for about 15 minutes. If you go look at your pot, you're gonna see some solid sodium acetate. So you wanna scrape that off and save it for later because we'll be placing that on top of the solution. Now because it's given the name hot ice, you may think it's ice made out of water. Although it may look that way, when you boil baking soda and vinegar and concentrate the solution, it becomes into a liquid form called sodium acetate. Almost a completely new thing. Now I know you guys know that sodium acetate usually is a solid form. I know you guys know this. You guys are smart. But we are starting backwards, beginning with the liquid form. Now watch what happens when you place its solid form in it. Like magic, I told you guys, this is exactly like Breaking Bad, except we're not making meth or, or some drug. We're making some sodium acetate and we're making some hot ice, which is pretty crazy. Look at these crystals form. It looks like it's turning into a solid thing. That is crazy. Now this might take a couple of tries to do, but just be patient with it. If you guys mess up, like it starts turning too much into a solid uh, or start crystalline up, all you have to do is place some vinegar in it, uh, about maybe two teaspoons, and place it back to boil. And you can repeat the process. So there you guys have it. That is how you make some hot ice, which is pretty cool. Well guys, that is it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed these five experiments because I sure enjoyed making it and sharing it with you guys. If you guys are new to this channel, be sure to subscribe because it's you. You, you the subscriber that helps me and keeps me motivated to keep on making awesome content. So thank you. So good vibes are sent to you. I'm Lord of Lion. Keep the blood pumping and take care. No, 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 no. Oh my God.